then you have mentioned earlier that you are writing a paper to document your gene therapy uh, journey. And could you share some of the, the findings with us, such as um, there is any is there any changes in the mesodes or telomeres like you just mentioned? Oh yeah. So that there's two probably this might be two different things. So I am writing a book about my experience as a as a patient advocate and as a person who just decided to do something that the scientific literature might not have suggested. But we do have a peer-reviewed paper out about my therapy in the telomeres. So um, I can I could send you a link to that. Um, hang on just a second. But we we have a we do have a peer reviewed paper about my um, my gene therapy, and then we also have a peer reviewed paper about uh, patients that we followed who took gene therapy for dementia as well. But I'll put my already being published. Yeah, yeah, it's already been published. This was published a couple. This was published a couple of years I've ago. I've got your I link. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then there's another paper that we published around, um, the dementia patients. And, um, so, you know, that's, that's what we do is, uh, we study what happens with these therapies and, uh, we try to get the information out there. And then our goal is to take them through the regulatory system and actually get them approved as drugs for humans. According to some of the reports, telomere's length of your right blood cell have been largely increased after treatment to pull them to being 20 years younger. Uh, but while some of people question that, um, telomeres are only one of the hallmarkers of aging, and their extension may um, doesn't one hundred percent equals to complete reversal of aging. Yeah, that's think? right. So when we started, uh, we thought that maybe just by lengthening telomeres, we could reverse all of aging, and it was a very common. Uh, thought at the time that maybe it would reverse all of the hallmarks of aging. So it, when I did the therapy, there were nine hallmarks of aging and now there's 12, but a lot of them are um, basically effects that happen from the first nine, uh, but that's okay. Anyway, um, actually my telomeres are longer than that now. So um, they started about 6 KB and now they're 9 KB. So I've taken the telomerase reverse transcriptase gene therapy twice. And so my, my telomeres continue to get longer. And so they're longer than 20 years gain at this point. But you're right, that's only one hallmark of aging. Now we know that by lengthening telomeres, we also benefit mitochondrial dysfunction. So that's two hallmarks of aging. And we showed that in our paper last year. No, was it last year? Maybe, I think it was last year or the year before that, we came out with a paper in PNAS about our drug development that we're doing with Rutgers University. And I'm going to post that paper for you as well. Um, this paper, is um, our latest um, peer-reviewed paper. And um, it shows that uh, the mitochondrial benefit. So then now we're talking about two hallmarks of aging. Leng lengthening telomeres also reduces your senescent cell load. So that's three hallmarks of aging. So, and it benefits, I, I do believe that by lengthening telomeres, that will be how we will defeat cancer. So by keeping your telomeres long, you know, what causes cancer, short telomeres or radiation type damages or congenital disorders that children are born with. So if we can keep the telomeres long, it will actually reduce genomic instability, which is four hallmarks of aging. So I'm thinking that that one gene does a lot more than we think, but no, did it reverse all of my aging? No, you can see me. I don't look like I'm 20. That, I mean, I, I so we need to find more genes. And that's why at this point, my company focuses on six different genes, and then we're developing new technology to deliver them all at one time. And that's what's exciting because then we might get the monster wave where we can really help people longer. But remember, 
Uh, telomere shortening is associated with every all cause mortality, all cause mortality, and a bunch of childhood diseases. So even if it doesn't cure a, all of aging, right now I believe that we could help millions and probably billions of people live healthier or longer just with one gene. Now we've got five more candidates. We put them together, we might be able to help people live healthier a lot longer. And what about the cost? Well, as you know, gene therapy is considered the most expensive drugs in the world. Um, of the 15 regulated gene therapies in the United States, the cheapest gene therapy to treat one eye, one eye is $425,000. Now, if you went to medical tourism, you could treat your whole body with one gene for less than that. So I'm really happy actually that medical tourism is going to help drive the cost of gene therapy down. And I think that that really will be the future. We will make gene therapy affordable by treating the biggest medical unmet need. The problem with the eye disorder or, or sickle cell anemia or hemophilia B is that they, they're they not large populations. And so therefore there's no way to make the drug affordable. But when we treat aging, we can make the drug affordable. And what do you think um, are the factors that may um, impact the overall cost of gene therapy? Well, it's all manufacturing. Uh, all, all the cost is manufacturing. So if you wanted to take the gene therapy that I took in 2015, um, at minimum, and this is if you bought really not very good gene therapy, at minimum, you'd probably pay $150,000, US dollars, sorry. Um, at maximum, you would pay over $300,000, right? If you were getting GMP, really high quality. Um, but if 10 people were getting it, if you came to get the therapy with 10 people, it would be less expensive per person. It might be um, $100,000 per person. If you brought 100 people, we could get it down to $50,000 per person. If we had 1,000 people, we could get it down to $40,000 per person. And that's the kind of scale that the world needs to see in curative medicine. Oh, there have been some controversy um, regarding the changes in your telomeres after treatment. There are also controversy about the the cost. They call it maybe um, the games of the rich. And also they are uh, questioning the data that lacks um, authoritative super, supervision. Mm, then what? how do you respond to all these criticisms? Um, they might not know that we actually have peer-reviewed papers. And actually some of the criticisms were, um, they just did, I don't think that they understood really what telomeres were or how it works. So with my data, we have used three different tests and clarified across all tests, the lengthening of my telomeres. They have never shortened and they've only lengthened. And now we have the data from several people. So it's not just my own data. So I think that, I think in the world, sometimes, sometimes to sound intelligent, um, people criticize because to be critical of something is easier to do than to understand what actually happened. And so, I mean, we don't get as much criticism as we used to get because they see that we're peer reviewed. Um, we actually release data. Uh, we work with patients in order to expedite drugs to humans. And so I don't really take the criticisms very seriously because they usually um, come from people not actually understanding what, what happened. That's really a good mentality. And what population... <laughs> think that uh, gene therapy for anti-aging is suitable for, or uh, who is not suitable for this treatment? Is there any age limitations or some other factors? Well, right now, because gene therapy is still experimental, I, d I think that people who participate in it should participate who are out of childbearing years. 
Um, just, I think that that's just a, a normal cohort um, inclusion exclusion criteria. Although you know that most gene therapies right now are for younger people. So there are younger people taking gene therapies, but right now for anti-aging, I think that these should be used in older people who need the technology. Now, as they're proven safe, which they will be one after another, you're going to see them used in younger and younger people. Because the older you get, the more damage you have from aging and the harder it's going to be to cure it. But when the technology is considered safe and it's used in 20 year olds, they will probably live, you know, a lot longer um, than older people who get access to the technology now. But the technology is ever changing. And so technology that can help you live a healthy extra five or 10 years to Today, which I think the technology we're working on could help people do, that five or 10 years might see you getting to the next treatments that will add much more and actually be, be able to reverse all of aging. So um, I'm really excited about that. You know, we have to take it one step at a time. That you are um, a representative of biohackers, you have been advocating for um, human experiments and even conducted experiment on yourself. And are you concerned um, that others may follow your behavior without proper national guidance? Ooh. That's a good question. So I have never advocated the use of gene therapy without a medical doctor. So I suggest that anyone who participates in gene therapy goes with a company who does gene therapy and works with a medical doctor in a medical clinic or hospital. So um, although I, I, I am a biohacker, I guess by definition, I definitely believe that people should do it safely. My MBA thesis was all around regulations and I actually work all over the world with governments in order to bring in new pre-regulatory uh, platforms for valuation of these drugs. So outside of my uh, daytime job uh, with gene therapy companies, I actually work with regulators to help patients get access to technology so that the drugs that go into the regulatory system already have known outcomes. Today, we use mice and rats to assess whether a therapy is safe, but those models are not predictive of human use. And again, 41 million people will die this year, and many of those would like to come forward to try new medicine. And do you or Bioviva have any plans to seek for FDA approval? Yes, we are actually doing two pre-INDs right now. Then could you please um, give us more details on that? Yeah, so we have two pre-INDs uh, that we're working on now. And that is one is for dementia and the other one is for metabolic disorder. And so even though we are treating aging at the cellular level, we will choose endpoints that the FDA recognizes like metabolic um, symptoms like blood glucose or with dementia, we'll look at uh, cognitive uh, uh, ability and uh, beta amyloid plaques and all of the things that they traditionally look at. The difference is, is that we'll be treating the cells for aging rather than treating them for a symptom of aging. And what are the your personal plans or BioViva's plans for the future? I heard that you have already uh, involved in cellular reprogramming programs. And can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so we're yeah. we're continuing on with um, our CMV delivery uh, for gene therapy. So today we use AAV, and it's really small, and it can only get a small genetic piece of material into your cells. CMV is bigger and it can get more genetic material in. And so maybe things like reprogramming factors plus lengthening telomeres and making your muscles stronger uh, we could all go into the same delivery. Now, I'm not saying that that's what we're working on because actually uh, cellular reprogramming um, Gene therapy is probably going to be an inefficient way to do that. That will probably be better taken care of from a small molecule, but we're waiting and seeing. So we're experimenting with it because 
when they reprogram the cells of a mouse, they actually don't live very long. And it's probably because the telomeres are too short to continue cellular division. So the com combination of these therapies, I'm trying to give you an example, is what we're working on with CMV, a bigger gene therapy delivery. Well, then listening to your sharing, many of our followers also have some questions to consult. May I convey their questions to you? Yeah.